Hello and welcome back to this new episode of the Future at Learning series. In this episode, I'm going to introduce prototypical networks and we'll see an intuition and overview of prototypical networks. We'll give a look to the algorithm and let's also see how we can implement it in PyTorch. So prototypical networks have been introduced in 2017 in uh, NERIPS and since the beginning they look like a very promising algorithm. Today they have something like 800 citation on the original paper and you can find the implementation of the first author of this article the GitHub, on the GitHub account and it's a nice implementation in PyTorch that you can use for, for, your, own, uh, for your own algorithms. Now we would like to start introducing this term prototype so we are talking about prototypical networks but what does it mean a prototype to have a prototype? So the prototype has an origin in the unsupervised learning literature, in particular in the k-means clustering, this is widely used. What is a prototype? Well, let's suppose that we have a bunch of points in a specific space, like this one. Each one of these points, like this one, for instance, doesn't have an associated label. Now let's suppose that we want to, uh, want to allocate these points to a certain amount of clusters, let's say three clusters, where k is here co correlated with the k means clustering uh, algorithms, k means the number of clusters, and uh, let's say that we have a red cluster, a green one, and a blue one. Now what we do is to estimate the distance between each point, each one of these randomly generated vectors representing the three clusters. Okay, so you generally initialize these random points close to the manifold because otherwise you will have problem later on some collapse solutions and it's better to generate close to the manifold and what you get once you estimate this distance and this is an Euclidean distance between each point and all the three prototypes in these cases you have to repeat this for each one of these points we estimate the distance and if you're going to take now the very first point we will see that there, there will be three associated distances, one with the red, one with the blue, and one with the green cluster. And we are going to ass uh, assign this first point to the closest uh, centroid, is, in this case it's the red one, so the red centroid is very close to this point, so this point is assigned to the red centroid, red, red cluster. The same we do with the green cluster and with the blue one. So all points are assigned to a cluster. Now since each point has been assigned to a cluster. If we get the average value of all the points assigned to a specific cluster, if we take the average value of these three points, well, we end up with another, uh, with a different location of the centroid. So the centroid from here is going to move here, and this is the new position of the centroid. We are going to take this average for all the possible uh, groups, clusters, and this will move the centroid to another location. If you repeat this algorithm many, many times, you will end up with a sort of stable solution and all the points will be allocated to a specific cluster. Now these centroids, these average values, are also called prototypes. So the prototype of a cluster is just the average of all the vectors belonging to this that specific cluster. And this has similar meaning also in prototypical networks. So suppose that we are now in a three way and in a five shot setup. I hope that at this point you know what does it mean way and shot. If you don't remember, go to the very first lessons. Basically it means that we have uh, three classes and for each class we have just five input samples. And here we are in a Latin space Z for specific dimensionality, in this case it's just dimensionality 2, we are in a Cartesian plane. And uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to take, for, suppose that we are here, class 1. So for class 1, we are going to take each one of the input images. We are 5 shot, so we have 5 input images. We're going to pass these five input images through our neural network. This will give us five Latin vector Z 
right? So we have Z1 up to Z5 after encoding the input image. Now what we do is just to take the average of all this latent vector. This can be easily done in PyTorch. And once we have the average value, this average value is just the centroid, the, the, the prototype of this specific class. This equals to C1 in, in our case. We can repeat the same process for all the other samples. And this will give us C2 and C3, so just the three prototypes for each one of these group of images. Now, suppose that we get a new point and call this point XQ. It is a query point, so we don't know the associated label to this point. What we can do is that we are going to encode to the network inside ZQ, and ZQ is just this point here now. This is ZQ, so ZQ will have a specific position inside our Latin space, in our case it's this position here, and ZQ, more importantly, has the same dimensionality of our prototypes. Now we are going to estimate the Euclidean distance between ZQ and all the prototype that we have, C1, C2, and C3. So let's say that D is our distance, distance between ZQ and the very first prototype, and the distance between ZQ and the second prototype, and the distance with the third prototype. And this distance here is geometrically just this line here, right? I want to find this line here. And, but uh, since we want an output to be represented as a probability distribution, and now we have distances, so the distances give more weight to points that are far apart, far away, but we want the opposite. So what we do is to apply just a minus sign to the distance, and this just turn the distance in a similarity. Now we have that uh, higher value means that the point is more close to, to the specific centroid. Once we've done this, we apply a standard softmax. And the softmax will turn these distances inside proper probability distribution. So we'll have three values here. The sum of these values would be 1, so it's a proper probability distribution. And higher the value, the associated value of a specific class, and higher is the probability that the input xq belongs to that class. In our case, if we are going to estimate the Euclidean distance, we will see that the closest one is just c2. So in this case, c2 would be the winning class, and we will say that xq belongs to the second cluster, to the second group of images. And this means that these five uh, samples here are probably very similar to this one and can easily estimate using these tricks to which class probably this Latin vector belongs to. Now let's give a look to the algorithm. Uh, even though the um, notation is slightly different here from the one that I use until now, if you are going to check line by line what's going on here, you will see that this is not different from what I explained you. We have a support and a query set, represented by S as a support, Q as a query. And we are estimating this, we are taking this for each possible class. And then here we are just estimating prototype for each possible class K. And how do we estimate this prototype? Well, we are just doing forward pass in our network, this f uh, phi of xi, this just corresponds to zi, it's the, uh, our Latin representation of the input xi, and we are going to sum all the zi belonging to a specific class k, so if we are in a uh, five-shot scenario, it means that we have five of these uh, zi, we are going to sum them up, and then we are going to divide by five in this case, and this will give us our prototype. Okay, it's just a prototype. Then once we got all the prototype for all the classes, we are ready for uh, estimating the loss, the loss function. 
So a loss is initialized to zero and then is updated here with a sort of uh, uh, with a certain number of iterations. And you don't have to get scared by this term, it's in these brackets, because we'll see now in the next slide what does it mean exactly, what is the loss in this case. So as you can see, I isolated again this term. Now we're going to give a look to what we have here inside these brackets. So what we want in the loss is that we want to minimize the negative log probability. What does it mean? So minimizing negative log probability. So let's start with the first term. What is the probability? What, which probability are we talking about? We're talking about this probability. X here is just the output of the network. K is our true table. X is just our input image. So what this probability is, is just a probability of the output belonging to a specific uh, true class given the input. So if we want to maximize this probability, so we want that at the next iteration, if we get the same in input, the probability that the output y is equal to the class we want to be is, is, is higher. Okay, this probability has to increase with time. How to do that? Well, first of all, what is this probability? Well, that's simply a softmax. As we said before, we are just passing, we are applying a distance, and uh, we are going to check the distance between the input x and our prototype ck in this case. And then we are passing this through a softmax, like this one. This will give us a certain uh, probability over classes. Now, here we want the log probability. Okay, second term is log. So what does it mean? It means that we are going to take the logarithm of this quantity here, phi of uh, y equals k given x. And this probability is just equal to the softmax. This is just equal of taking the logarithm of uh, this softmax value. Right. So we have the exponential here of a negative distance of something. And we have just a sum over an exponential, also in this case, also in this case of a minus distance of something. Okay. Now, if we take the logarithm of this of these two terms and we apply the rules of logarithms, we see that the logarithm of a ratio is equal to the difference between the logarithm of the two terms. This just turns out to be equal to the log of the exponential of minus distance minus the logarithm of this second term, also in this case an exponential, and now you would see that the logarithm is neutralized by the exponential here can get rid of this and what we end up is just minus distance of something minus log of this sum of exponentials term here right but what happens now is that we want to maximize this this value Okay, this probability. But uh, in a stochastic gradient sense, we always minimize something. So if you apply PyTorch optimizer stochastic gradient sense, we are going to minimize something. So if we want to maximize this, what we can do is just to apply a minus in front of this expression. And this minus will turn up this minus signs here in a plus. And just taking the negative of the quantity will turn up this quantity in this expression here and I'm going to check is exactly what we have here right exactly the same expression so minimizing this quantity through stochastic gradient descent is equal to maximizing this probability and uh, so this we simplify this, this expression and starting from this probability 
we end up with exactly what we wanted inside these brackets. It's time to give a look to some code. This is an implementation in PyTorch. And I think that it was better here to just implement the forward pass. This is just the forward method. I took this code, readapted it from the original repository of the first author of the paper, and just embed what they wrote inside a class, inside a method, forward method. And uh, what, what I do in the, inside this method is to pass the support points, the query points, and the query labels. So they have to, those are the labels of the query points. And the first stage here, we are going to estimate a certain amount of interesting quantities, like the total number of classes, the number of support points, and the number of query points. Okay, this can be estimated from the dimensionality of these uh, input tensors. Then, I'm going to concatenate the support in the query. So x here is just given by support inputs and the query inputs just a more comfortable way to deal with uh, these query and support points because in this way we can just do a single forward pass in our network this is more efficient so we can just pass x now we will get our z z in our case is just in this case now will be z of support points z of query points and what we do here is to estimate the z of the prototypes in the query set. Regarding the prototype, uh, as you can see, what we do is just to take a mean after the prototype of a specific class. And uh, so for each class, we will end up with taking the average value of the vectors associated to that class and to the support points in that specific class. And this will give us the prototypes. For the query points from Z here, we don't need to do anything. We just have the query points. We encoded it with the neural network. So we just have to extrapolate them from Z. This is what we are doing here. We're just taking the query points. Okay, now it's time to estimate the, uh, the distance, okay? We are taking an Euclidean distance here. This is a function that can be easily implemented. We'll, we will find online tons of implementation of Euclidean distance. We are taking this between the query points and the prot prot prototypes. And what we do in the next step is just what I explained you in the uh, previous slide. We are just taking the logarithm of the probability. So in this case, it's a softmax. So the logarithm of the softmax. We are doing this in one line because it's, it's more efficient. And in uh, PyTorch, there is just this, the call of this to this method that will give us the log softmax of an expression. Notice here that we are taking the negative of the distances. As I told you before, this negative value here, this turn up, turns a distance inside a similarity. And because the softmax has to be, uh, we want a high probability for points that are close in, in lattice space. This is what we are doing with this minus sign here. Then y hat here is just uh, consists in taking the maximum value of the log of p of y. This is a sort of um, our our best guess to which class specific class uh, an input belongs to. It's our best guess why at. And here we're estimating the loss. Loss is just as I told you before, just in, consists in taking the negative of what we found found out here. We're just taking this log p of y, taking the negative, gathering the values related to the query set taking a mean, and this is our loss. And then we are going to pass this loss as output of this method. And this will be the input to a uh, optimization uh, object in PyTorch. We're also estimating the accuracy here. It is just consists in finding which values of y hat are similar to y query. So when uh, this method returns one, when they are similar or zero, when they are not. So taking a mean of this expression here corresponds to to uh, find to find out uh, how, how how many uh, samples we correctly guessed okay with our uh, best guess y hat then we can return the loss and the accuracy we can give a look to the original implementation as i told you since this we will find the complete code 
and you can adapt it as you like. Okay, so we are going now to see what are the pros and cons of prototypical networks. Advantages that they are very easy to implement, very efficient, as we saw. Other advantages that they are very noise resistant. So, for instance, if we get some wrong labels for our inputs, since we are estimating a mean for evaluating the prototypes, even if one of the inputs has a wrong label, we are, we are having a, uh, estimating a mean that is quite robust against this kind of outlier noise, our prototypes will still be pretty good. And another advantage is that can be easily adapted to the zero-shot uh, setting. I invite you to see the original paper since they explain pretty well how to do this. Now, there are also some uh, problems with this algorithm. One of these is that they tend to underperform when uh, you use smaller networks. So if you want to use a small network because you are in a kind of uh, uh, specific setting where you want um, uh, some kind of network that have a lower um, performance footprint, then you cannot use uh, prototypical networks because they will have uh, underperformance here. Another problem is that when you apply an adaptation step on the test support set, well, prototypical networks may have big problems. In some cases, they can also be harmful. Uh, what is adaptation? Well, when you have your support points on a test time, you may fine tune a little bit your algorithm on this uh, labeled uh, support set. And this generally gives you some advantages, like in MAMA, for instance. But in the case of uh, prototypical networks, um, you can see this article is a pretty good article that show that this is actually harmful. So if you do adaptation with prototypical networks in this way, this will uh, um, deteriorate your performances. Okay, so I think I give you a pretty good rapid overview of prototypical networks, and I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.